Live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, Mark Logic, and Teradata. With hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're at Big Data NYC, concurrent with Hadoop World and Strata. Manny Chabra is here, he's the CEO of Cloudwick. Cube alum, Manny, great to see you again. Same here, Dave. I mean, see you and I've been uh, sort of the old warriors here. It's five years for yeah. you guys and five years for us coming to Strata. It's yeah. awesome, it was fun seeing you last night. We had a great conversation, our, our Big Data Capital Markets event, a big party afterwards, so thanks very much for coming and uh, hope you had a good time. <laughs> thanks a lot for inviting us. Yeah, so, um, we heard from Jeff Kelly yesterday that a lot of the dough being made in big data is in services. Big time. About 45% of it. And I don't see that changing anytime soon, do you? I, I think, uh, Dave, this is the first time in the technology history where the services are leading the technology. Mm. Earlier it was hardware and software and the services used to be the third piece, which used to come after. But this is the first time in the history of technology where services becomes first and then you follow with the hardware and software piece. Yeah, it's kind of was, you know, we went from break fix to you know, implementation and now it's like, what do I do? Yes. You know, I call guys like you. Yeah. So take us through, you get a call from a customer. You know, give us a typical scenario. We typically come, don't come with a, the customer directly. We are very aligned with the partner channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we are being brought by Cloudera, Hortonworks, data stacks of the world because what they can do very well is that they can take the customer from the use case discovery to the pre-production. And then we come into play is on the production side of the business. Because scaling from 40 nodes to 400 nodes is not an easy in the enterprise. And our focus is enterprise fortune 1,000. Uh, that is where we think the really, really need is of the help on the DevOps side of the data engineering side of the business. And that has been our focus. So talk a little bit more about the, the DevOps side. So you've got an affinity with the DevOps folks. Um, talk about the state of DevOps in that Fortune 1000. Oh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, day. I mean, we had a great discussion last yeah. night on this thing. One of the things which has happened in the last 20 odd years ever since uh, you know, we moved from relational databases is the outsourcing piece. The outsourcing has totally hollowed the enterprise IT. There is no skill set available in the enterprise IT today to manage the databases. And so the DevOps piece, which has to basically do, you know, all the builds every 24 hour, 24 by seven time is very difficult for the enterprise, you know, because not having the skill set. Whereas Web 2.0 companies are basically based upon that model. Mm -hmm. And the enterprise is very, very having hard challenge to identifying how to do those things. And DevOps is very required for these things because if you're a bank, you know, you have to kind of move, you have to basically scan checks, you have to basically, you know, provide all the services which come in this uh, digital world. And those are all relying on the latest builds every night, you know. So that is a big, big chasm out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, is it is it th is it a mindset issue, or is it simply is it also again that they just don't have the skill set to be able to do that, or is it also kind of the change management challenge? It's always difficult to change if you've been doing things a certain way. So specifically, I mean, banking obviously a a, a very mature industry. I s it's I think everything. It's the thing in the enterprise, this is the one of the biggest disruption. I think the people transformation, the process transformation is entirely new. It's uh, extremely, extremely complex for them. Because they have been doing a relying on relation databases and preset worlds. But now you have to change according to everything. I mean, so you know, and we know this thing, I mean, MapReduce used to be the big darling, you know, the last uh, uh, strata, now the Spark. And, s and then also there is no place to go anywhere. You can learn Spark, you can call somebody. You know, so it is very difficult. Like, yeah, Hadoop Spark is like Cloudera, Hortonworks, and then DataStack Spark, Cassandra. And so, I mean, the three different entities supporting Spark. So how do you do those? Those kind of challenges in the enterprise have been extremely difficult to solve. You know, earlier there's one call to make to Oracle to solve all the problems, but that's not what's happening. Right. You know? So a lot of dissonance in the world. So you get, you get IT folks, you got sort of the old and the new, and you know, the, the, the Hadoop guys saying, hey, this is how you got to do it. And, and the traditional IT guys going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. You know, especially in the Fortune 1000, yeah. no, that's not what we do around here. Yeah. We have to make sure that it's, you know, available, reliable, recoverable, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, you got the business guys that just, you know, they yeah. want the, the, the results. So there's a dissonance between, there's always been between IT and business, and then within IT, how are you seeing that, and how do you help resolve those gaps? Uh, 
EU is any point, that's one of the biggest things. The line of business guys have intuitive understanding of the markets now because they see these patterns emerging out of Silicon Valley where their own core business is basically being taken by these upstarts. And these upstarts are data-driven business. They capture data at every transaction of the way. Now, if you're an enterprise, you're a line of business, you know that is what's going to happen. But the IT is a tough one to crack. So one of the things which basically we come and do is that we have developed this tool where we capture all this base information. And our DevOps folks is called Cloudic Big Loop. And basically is an open platform for sharing the operational intelligence of the system with the vendors, like a Cloud uh, Hardware data stacks, and the customer. And what we try to do at the first level is to establish the baseline, what your clusters are, what configuration, what hardware, what networking, you know, to get the, all the operational baseline. Once the operation baseline is established, then you can keep updating the information as being shared because in the cluster of the things, networking is a big factor. You know, it was never a big factor mm -hmm. in Oracle. You know, if you're not an Oracle DBA, you never used to worry, worry about that. You know, now networking, you basically have, okay, the, even the 10G or 1G and one connection will make a difference. You know, and now you basically have Spark, in-memory things. You know, entirely different workloads are being done. So how do you do those? I think that's where we start with. And then we, these tools allow the vendors to see what's happening at the operational level. Because they're very good in technical problem solving. I mean, they can do, the, all the techs can do that. But operational is as big a challenge in the day-to-day -day affairs in those enterprises. Uh, Abhi Mehta yesterday in the panel, was, we were talking about ROI. Jeff put up some data that said, you know, people want to get a bigger ROI, but for every dollar they're spending, they're only getting 55 cents on their, on their return because they don't have the skill sets and they don't have the knowledge. Um, and then Abhi Mehta made the point, the ROI is not the way, what, what he's seeing is that the focus on ROI is not the traditional ROI, it's reduction of investment is yeah. really where they're getting the value today as opposed to sort of you know, many organizations. What are you seeing there? No, you're, you're exactly right. The, what we have been seeing in the enterprise is the first thing what is happening is the cost reduction because if you're replacing, not even replacing, but you're not, not net, no net new buying of Teradata and Atiza as the mainframe MIPS. All that data. Baseline that. The baseline that. Mm -hmm. And that is moving all to Hadoop. You know, and then you still, I think, in the transition stage where you're performing the Teradata uh, of the world where you're doing the reporting and all the other things which I've been doing. So the Hadoop hasn't been evolved into that level. But I think with the Impala and also the in implementation which Hot uh, guys have been doing on the high side of the business and integrating the Tableau and the new visualization, I think you'll see the transition happening fast where they become sort of the EDWs of the future. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, so that, <laughs> again, we talked about this. So there's, there's a dollar that used to be spent on EDW and now there's 40 cents spent or maybe 30, 30 cents, cents spent, yeah. spent over here. Yeah. So can they make it up in volume? <laughs> it's like that story that Abhi Mehta told yeah. yesterday. Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's a challenge. And I think Teradata is being smart. They basically are getting much deeper into Hadoop space. You yeah. know? And I think the markets are getting bigger. The pervasiveness of the data is so huge that I think they will sell licenses more cheaper, but much more in numbers. Mm -hmm. so yeah, no, I mean, it's a serious question. Yes, I mean, in, in concept, they, they potentially could make it up in volume. volume. Yeah. I mean, you look at Hortonworks' assumption that 50% of the world's data is going to be on Hadoop by whatever date they, they the choose. And I know that's sort of a marketing thing, yeah. but. Okay, pick a date, it's going to happen. happen. It doesn't so, happen, yeah. And with data growing like this and, and budgets not, not growing, you know, the, 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 the only way is to get on that curve and, yeah. and be a volume leader, right? No, no, you're right. I, I think the budget should grow. Once, once the, the companies move mm -hmm. beyond the cost savings, I think when the CMO starts seeing the value, I think the marketing budgets will grow. That will basically affect the traditional uh, you know, digital marketing and all those things. Those things will increase. Mm -hmm. the but it's interesting grow. your point about that. And Abhi you know, s was very vocal about this yesterday, really starting with the, the dramatic cost savings. And I guess it makes sense within the Fortune 1000. That's what they have to do. But if you look at these sort of born in the big data, born in the cloud startups, they're not worried about cost reduction. They're worried about creating massive value, you know, Uber and, and yeah, the likes. Yeah. And, and, and so, how do you discern, in, in your experience, Manny, those Fortune 1000 companies that are going to be able to compete effectively? Because they are there. We know that some percentage of the Fortune 1000 maybe won't cross that chasm, but others will. What's the characteristic of that leader, that big data, you know, tech athlete that's going to actually be able to ride that digital fabric and compete with these 
new upstarts, whether I it's in retail. I mean, so one of the examples is that you basically saw the GE guys, yeah, you know? Yeah, I mean, how fast one can move is GE. I mean, yeah. so you know, they're offering a service now. <laughs> you know, so I think the enterprise, Fortune 1000 enterprise have to do that, mm. you know? Because it is an existential threat. I mean, we've seen, I mean, it's HP dividing in two parts, semantic dividing in two parts. I mean, these things never used to happen. The consolidation used to be thing. <laughs> right, right, you know, right. But they are getting nimble because they see the line, you know, over there. And I think, uh, enterprises basically who, who basically look forward and kind of embrace this thing and take it on, I will survive. I think the enterprises which won't, they won't. So pe peel that onion a little bit. Um, what do you see as the, as the, as the maybe it's skill sets, characteristics, wh what is the company that can actually transform, you know, look like? What, what, what should they be doing? What should they be focused on? What's the advice that you would give to them? I think the best thing what can you do is like, you know, I remember when I came in my career, you know, we used to be seeing like Oracle used to hire, IBM used to hire, and they used to give six months, you know, training to the uh, support staff and everybody, and then they basically move them to kind of move into the roles. Now that is not being done presently. I think the enterprises mm. have to train the staff. You know, the staff has to take that to meet the challenge because net new numbers cannot come that high. You know, how many consultants they can hire? I mean, they're not many. So I think the existing staff has to be trained you know, and I think the vendors had to basically do a much better job in providing uh, online training and basically having training within the enterprises so the, the st existing staff can take on the challenge. Because until the existing staff doesn't take the challenge, the transformation doesn't happen, these things are not going to move fast, you know, uh, from, the, from the bottoms up. And from the line of the business side is, I think they basically are making an effort into basically moving to those channels, and I think that will happen. So I think the will is there. I mean, that is the one different thing in this year is that there are serious business talks happening now. Mm -hmm. which is earlier a hype, you know, for the last three, four years mm -hmm. when you come to Strata. Mm -hmm. Now s s people are asking, okay, I have this problem. How is going to solve this problem, you know? As, um, as an SI, uh, I mean, uh, your whole life is uh, solving complexity, yeah. right? Um, and it used to be in the old days of SI, you know, things like SAP implementations are so complex and it was a boon for, for the, the systems integrator business. Um, but now what we've seen is things like you know, the cloud and consolidation of infrastructure, conversion of infrastructure, it's sort of eaten away at that business and SIs really have to move fast. Now you're a specialist, you're born fast. Um, so this question I'm asking, it's almost one of those, you know, it could you know, put your existing business out of business, but what's next? But, but what are you as, a, as, a, as an integrator seeing in terms of the industry that the industry needs to do gaps that they need to fill, because Hadoop is, is complex, it's too complex. complex. Uh, and, in, and what does that mean for your business going forward? I think it I means we have to be a continuous learning, evolving organization, mm -hmm. because what we saw in the market, three years back it was totally Hadoop, I mean, till last year it was Hadoop, but we saw a lot of emergence happening in the NoSQL space. So we moved fast and we basically started working in data stacks on Cassandra side, we won the big part, the first partner award from them. You know, now we basically are the first SI to get certified on Spark. So what we are looking is that, okay, the, cha the change is going to happen. It's a constant change. We cannot rest. So what we had to do is basically we had to take all the knowledge which we learned from the industry, kind of like put together in the use case perspective and take these existing technologies which are coming at a much faster pace, have our staff kind of like have continuous learning. And I think the SI, that's a challenge. Mm. that you have to adapt, you have to continuously learn if you want to stay in the SI space. I think the SIs themselves are the first ones to go if they don't adapt. And the businesses will come after you because we are there to solve the problem. If we cannot solve the problem, we're the first ones to go. What, do you, what are your thoughts on the capital markets as an SI? Uh, we saw Think Big Analytics get, get acquired by, by Teradata. You're seeing you know, hundreds of millions of dollars go into you know, the big distro uh, uh, vendors. You know, service is not sexy. You know, it is. It's, I always yeah. say it's where the rubber meets the road in terms of <laughs> business value, but from an investor standpoint, it's like, eh, you know, there's other things I want to you know, invest in. What's your take on that? I think it's changing. I mean, so we talked about it, the 45% uh, service share in the big data. I mean, it's a huge market. Mm -hmm. You know, we are growing. We basically hit 10 million this year. Uh, we expected to grow another 125% next year, 20, 25 million dollars. It's a serious business to us. <laughs> you know, we live through it, you know, and we're having fun of our life. <laughs> so I think it's a serious business. I think it will drive the next generation of the big data technology services. And you see it from the fact that all the vendors are establishing a lot of service uh, component to them. Yeah, I think it's critical for the technology providers to establish these relationships because they're, as you said, if, if, if you're not able to move these things into production, that's good. I mean, that, that's where the revenue is going to come for the technology providers. Yes, you're right. <laughs> and so they need to make that 
happen yeah. and happen seamlessly as possible. I wonder if you could size up your competition a little bit on the, on the big side. So how do you see the, uh, the big guys of the world, the Accentures of the world, Deloitte's of the world, you know, they're, they're starting big data practices, you're seeing their marketing start to mention big data and analytics. Um, are they able to adapt? I mean, as, as quickly as, as somebody like Cloudwork who was, who was really focused on this space? Well, I think the way they basically have a great is they have the domain knowledge and the relationships which exist in the market. But the challenge, obviously, for any big company is how to move fast into the space. And our focus has been on the, not on the sexy part of the business and the analytics part. We have always been focused on the data engineering part of the business, which we think is a very scalable model because everybody, before you do analytics, you have to do engineering. You know, and I think in and what we are finding in our space, there's not, not much competition. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the field is so wide that you can keep, it's an execution challenge more than anything else. Well, what struck me that they may even be a potential partner for someone like you because they don't have that skill set, and they, and they, but as you mentioned, they've got that, those relationships. Yeah. Um, and when you can tie the, w your, your competency in the integration and, and really getting the system stood up and, and in production, and you tie that to the business use case and the business value, and talking to the business side, then then I think there's there's potentially a win-win for, for, for both. both. I mean, I think that that's what we have been seeing. We we don't go directly to the market a lot. We basically have partner aligned. We, we mm -hmm. are very close to the Lloyd guys. Uh, we had an introduction to Cap Gemini guys. So I think things are happening in that area. They mm -hmm. see that problem, and I think we have a solution for some part of that problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, they tend to compete in a couple of dimensions, which I presume you don't. I mean, they have like super deep vertical industry and micro vertical e industry expertise around the globe. No, I mean, that's yeah. not your game. No, right? that's not our your game. Your game is you're Hadoop yeah. experts, right? Yeah. I mean, you're that ecosystem, you know, players. Now, but you have to stay ahead of those guys, obviously, that is in true. that regard. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and so, so how do you do that? You got connections. You know, we were talking offline about the, the guys at Wandisco who are like like super alpha geeks. You know, those, those kind of. You got those guys on staff. I mean, yeah, is we that got the guys on staff who mm -hmm. basically can go and evolve the technology, look at the technology, and we are coming a big part of the ecosystem now as this grows because now it is not only because the vendors are focusing on their technology. So if you look big data, it's getting complex. I mean, see, so talk about their Hadoop is complex, eight different components. So you put NoSQL in that. Now you put Spark with it. You know, it is becoming a horizontal stack in which there's not one player who solve the solutions, mm -hmm. you know? So the stitching has to be done. You know, you have basically visualization aspect there, you have the log management aspect there. I mean, there's so many players in the industry right now which are providing a solution. So I think our value comes is that we can stitch all these things together mm. on an engineering basis, mm -hmm. you know, and to provide a complete solution where the vendors have maybe a large part of that, but there is an associated ecosystem which has to come together too. Well, so, so in relating to that, so we're seeing, uh, I mean, just a flurry of, you know, partnership announcements between the technology providers. Now, we're now I'm certified on Cloudera, I'm certified on Hortonworks to work together, whatever. How does that impact your business? Now, if, they're if, they're, if, the, if the technology providers are, are integrating more closely together, how, what does that do to your value proposition? Or are you seeing, are we seeing a lot of quote unquote Barney partnerships, you know, kind of just just a logo to put up on a press release? Um, I, I think it, it is to some extent, I mean, like that, but it, it is also real, you know? But you see a lot of these things happening. I mean, if you see, we were just talking to the uh, Elastic, uh, Elastic Search guys. I mean, they have a big component of logs, log stash and log search, which you can do with the Elastic Search and come with a Splunk-like solution. You know, now they run basically on Hortonworks, they run on uh, Cloudera, they run on Mapper. So, you know, those kind of things are valuable mm -hmm. because they are a part of the solution. I mean, the solar search is a big component, Lucidworks is doing something, but uh, same Hadoop is doing, uh, Cloudera is doing on the search also. So those things are going to be there. You know, Strom, Kafka, Samza, now, I mean, see, you have all these <laughs> names coming up, you know, and they are continuously evolving. You know, but the stitching has to be done. Yeah. The, the underpinnings is the same on the com in, from the engineering perspective, it's a distributed programming pro paradigm. Mm -hmm. you know? So once you get that, it becomes rather simple for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Manny, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's always yeah, a well pleasure. Welcome, Great to see you again. Thanks a lot for having me, Jeff. And, uh, yeah, it's amazing to watch the, the way in which this ecosystem is developing, it and is. you guys are right at the heart of it. So congratulations yeah. on all your success, and we'll be watching. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back right after this word. Thank you, guys. Great to see you.